In this video, we're going to walk you through how to set up your Raspberry Pi using the new method. I saw a lot of guides out there that use noobs and really that's not used anymore. Noobs is for noobs, don't use it. We have Raspberry Pi OS, we have the updated steps, and we're going to show you exactly how to do it from start to finish. We're also going to get into some follow-up steps like how to connect to Wi-Fi, how to connect over SSH, PuTTY, uh, remote desktop VNC. So you're going to know exactly how to get your Raspberry Pi up and running. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is download Raspberry Pi Imager from the Raspberry Pi website. And this software lets us flash the operating system to our micro SD storage card. Okay, so we need to get the Raspberry Pi operating system onto our SD card. So the software that we want to use is called Raspberry Pi Imager. And we're going to get that from raspberrypi.org. So let's take a look over there. And then we're going to click on software. Basically what you're going to see here is if we go to all download options. So these are the actual Raspberry Pi operating systems. And we're going to want that, but we also need a way to get the OS onto the SD card. We need a flasher. And so we're going to use Raspberry Pi Imager, and this is going to bundle everything together. So let's go ahead and download Raspberry Pi Imager for our system. I'm going to download for Mac OS. Okay, so now we should have Raspberry Pi Imager. Looks like we do. I'm going to load it up. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button so we can get it out to a wider audience. Thank you. Okay, so this is going to let us flash the operating system to our SD card. Okay, and since we're looking to flash our SD card, we're going to go ahead and pull it out of our um, Raspberry Pi slot here. And um, just so you know, I'm using a SanDisk 32 gigabyte micro SD card. So we do need to connect it to our computer so that we can uh, get the, oper the um, Raspberry Pi operating system on this card. So you can use one of these guys, which is a SD card to USB converter, or um, you can use a um, micro SD to SD converter. And since uh, my Mac has a native um, SD card reader, I'm just going to go ahead and use this. So I'm going to throw it in there and then I'm going to insert it into uh, my computer here. Quick note here, if you're micro SD card is over 32 gigabytes, then you may need to format it to the FAT32 file system type. And that's pretty easy to do. Both Microsoft and Mac have uh, native formatting solutions that you can use to do that. Um, but if your SD card is smaller than that, you shouldn't need to worry about that. Now that we have our SD connected to our computer, let's just double check that it is showing up Okay, so now that the SD card is connected to my computer, I'm just going to look in a finder window to see what drives I have um, currently attached. And it looks like it is showing up as boot, which looks fine to me. So let's go ahead and flash the uh, Raspberry Pi operating system to that drive. So we're going to select the operating system we want. I'm going to do the out of the box uh, Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. And then we're going to select our storage. Um, make sure you're selecting the right storage here because uh, if you select the wrong drive, you're going to overwrite everything. So this is my one terabyte Samsung. Do not want to select that. This is my 32 gigabyte micro SD and that's the target drive. So we're going to go ahead and click right. Okay, looks like we're all set. That probably took about four minutes. So we're going to come back over to Finder here. Okay, it looks like it ejected the drive proactively for us. So we can go ahead and pull the drive out of the computer. Okay, so the next step here is we just want to power on our Raspberry Pi right here. So I've connected it via USB-C. Let me just um, connect this guy into our um, power strip here. Okay. Um, all right, so the Raspberry Pi is down here. And then uh, for this tutorial, we're gonna use uh, a keyboard and mouse. So I will connect those as well. 
Mind you, we have another tutorial that um, shows you how to do this whole thing headless without any peripheral devices. So go check that out if that um, makes sense for what you're trying to do. Okay, so just plugging in my keyboard and mouse. And actually I forgot a pretty critical piece here. We wanna connect this to um, the monitor. So uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so we have this thing right here. Um, I think this is a mini HDMI cable, but someone yelled at me at the last video because I think I called it a micro. So, I don't know. It's an HDMI cable, it's small. It's either mini or micro. Um, okay, so let's throw it in here. Oh, let's see, come on. Sorry, just need a third hand right now. Okay, so um, the HDMI cable is plugged in um, and that just leads to a standard True full-size HDMI, I'm just gonna power on my uh, TV here. And this should actually just show up right off the bat. Okay, so now everything is plugged in and I'm going to just toggle the switch here. And now we can see some activity so, showing up. And then if we look at our monitor here, should show the operating system booting. Bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Okay, so uh, the monitor is set up. We enabled our Raspberry Pi. There's that very pleasant audible message about installing a screen reader. I believe that'll go away when we finish the uh, configuration here. So let's just step through it. I'm gonna mute that for everyone's sanity. Um, okay, so United States, and we do wanna go through this process because uh, there are some quirks that will not work properly if we don't have these selected. So I am just going to select my location and walk through this. Okay, it's prompting us to change the password. We should probably do that. Looking good. And then this is uh, optimizing the screen dimensions. And then Wi-Fi, it will pick up the um, networks within close proximity. Should be able to find ours and connect. I name my networks after Star Wars characters. Don't ask me why. So I had, um, I had provided the credentials to my network previously. Otherwise you would just be prompted to provide the password. Um, and then we should do a software update because there's been patches and so forth. And that will probably take a while. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi is restarting. And now you can see that the border issue is fixed and the dimensions are properly aligned. So we're gonna do some more configuration here. I'm gonna open the terminal and run raspi config. We're gonna first elevate ourselves to root by doing sudo su hyphen, and then we'll run raspberry pi hyphen config. I'll zoom in for you. So raspi could not determine the default user. What user should the settings apply to? So Pi is the, the default user. If you wanted to change the user, you would have to do that at the Linux level. You can't do it through this configuration screen here. Um, but if you just follow the generic steps for creating a new user, 
through a Linux operating system that will work. And then a couple other things, we want to enable remote desktop. So we go to interface options, then we go to VNC, and then we enable VNC. And that's nice to have because we won't always have a um, hardwired monitor. Sometimes we want to remotely connect headless. And then additionally, for interfacing options, we want to enable SSH so that we can access through the command line interface. If we so choose, we should also make sure that the Raspberry Pi is updated, but we already did that during the initial setup, so we should be good there. Okay, so this setup should be all set now. It will be more secure, more accessible. And then for some of these settings to take effect, we're going to have to reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, looks like we're back up and running. So, you know, in effect, we have a, you know, small $35 desktop computer that has a decent amount of performance capabilities. I mean, it has decent amount of RAM, okay, CPU. It's, it's good for browsing, you know, obviously not enough for any sort of heavy duty processing like machine learning or video editing, but adequate for a, a good range of tasks. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to connect to your Raspberry Pi remotely through SSH and remote desktop. This is a really useful capability to have in your toolkit as you interface with your Raspberry Pi device. So now we need to validate that our Raspberry Pi is in fact connected to our local network. So I actually just logged into my router's homepage here, the admin portal, and uh, most routers offer this capability where they will list connected devices just so you can kind of audit that um, the devices that are connected to your network are the expected devices. Okay, and then when I list the connected devices, I see Raspberry Pi here. That is the default host name. You can change that if you need. Um, I also see the IP address. So this is what I would expect, and it's connected to my 2.4G network uh, because I have a dual band router. And as I mentioned, it will not connect to 5G, so uh, make sure you keep that in mind. So another way to validate that it's on the network if you can't find your uh, router login page is to uh, pull open a terminal. Okay, so I'm just gonna open a terminal here. Expand this guy. We should be able to ping the host name. So I'm gonna do ping Raspberry Pi. And you can see it is responding to uh, ping traffic, I ICMP traffic. So I'm gonna do control C to terminate that. Um, quick caveat, if you're on a Windows machine, a Windows 10 machine, you're not gonna have a Linux terminal to do like the SSH and the ping and, um, and that sort of thing. So what you're gonna wanna do is download the Linux subsystem. If you're on a Windows computer, you wanna download the Linux subsystem. And once you do that and have it enabled, I think you can use like the Windows Store to download um, Ubuntu or one of the Linux operating systems. It's actually a really great feature of Windows 10, which is you can run a Linux container. And that Linux container will give you a uh, Linux terminal, uh, which is similar to the Unix terminal that I'm running here on my Mac. And, um, and when you have that ready, you can do exactly what we're doing here with ping, SSH, and that sort of thing. Okay, so we're gonna show you a couple other ways to connect remotely to your Raspberry Pi. So first, we're gonna wanna connect over SSH. We can go ahead and do that right now. So I'm just gonna do SSH. The default username on Raspberry Pi is Pi and then we need to supply the host name. So we're gonna do pi at raspberry pi. And then it's gonna ask us only on the first connection if we want to use the um, RSA fingerprint, we're just gonna select yes. Um, okay, so I have uh, fingerprints from previous connections and it's saying that there's a discrepancy here. I'm gonna just uh, proceed through that. It's prompting me for a password. So uh, out of the box, the password is raspberry. Okay, and now I'm connected. If I do ls just to list um, everything. So, so, so Raspberry Pi OS is a Debian 
Linux variant. So essentially it's just a, a Linux operating system. So um, things will look pretty standard. Um, another thing you can do is um, if you want to save the connection, you can do uh, shell, new remote connection, um, just select SSH, do plus, provide the host name, in this case it's pi refactored, and then uh, user, and then, yeah, that's it. So the command is SSH pi at pi refactored, and we can just test it out here. And that looks good. Okay, so now we have a saved connection. It's kind of like PuTTY. So if you're on Windows, you could download PuTTY and you can save the connection as well. Um, and I just wanted to prove you can do that on Mac as well. So Next, if you want a full GUI desktop experience with your Raspberry Pi, you can use remote desktop and connect using the VNC protocol. Okay, so to be able to view our uh, Raspberry Pi's actual GUI and desktop, we're gonna have to use a VNC client. Okay, so I'm gonna download real VNC and just make sure you're getting the viewer software. Looks like it works on all platforms, so should be able to use this for Windows as well. Okay, so I'm gonna put the address in here, which is using the IP address that we found. Uh, so this is a local terminal. If I do dig, Ra um, sorry, the new the no the new host name is Pi Refactored. All right, so I believe this is going to be my IP address. Let's try this. Okay. And then we might have to adjust our local Mac settings so that we can actually control and um, screen share properly. Let's not give that one. All right, so I'm just giving VNC. Okay, and now you can see we're controlling um, our actual Raspberry Pi. Okay, so right here on the left, we have the VNC remote desktop connection where I can actually interface with the GUI. On, on the right, we have the SSH connection. And what I wanna show you is um, how the two correlate. So like if I navigate to the desktop and that's the um, directory being shown here, I can create a file, right? Touch test.txt. And you can see it shows up on the desktop. See, these are just two different ways to interface with the operating system. There's the GUI, and then there's the CLI, the command line utility. And then real quick, if you're on Windows, you, another option is to use remote desktop. It's a native application that should be able to connect to VNC servers. Okay, and then to wrap this all up, let's just do one quick little fun project, which is to host a website on our Raspberry Pi. So the easiest way to do this in my mind is to choose a server software. I like Nginx, so I'm going to do apt get install Nginx. It's asking me to elevate to root, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to retype that command. And I'm going to install Nginx. So this downloads the uh, Nginx server software and it also should stand up a website that we can visit when we hit the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's just validate that the website is serving up traffic on localhost. So we're just gonna do curl localhost. Okay, this is the out of the box Nginx website. So in theory, let's open a new local terminal. Um, let's grab the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna do, oops, I, I changed the host name to Pi Refactored. So this is my IP address. So from here, if I do curl on the IP address, I get my website. So this is making me think if I um, open a new incognito window, incognito window, and go to this IP address, boom, we're hosting a website from our Raspberry Pi. And just to confirm that, that we are in fact hosting that website, um, I'm gonna go to the HTML directory, 
So I'm gonna install a text editor because I want to be able to edit text. I'm gonna use Vim. So app get install Vim. And I'm gonna use Vim. And I'm going to remove the H1 element and add a new H1 element. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Now when we go back to our website, boom. And I just wanted to make a quick plug for all the other really interesting projects that you can do with Raspberry Pi. You can buy add-ons and extensions and modules that can do all sorts of things, GPS and uh, robotic arms and things like that. So there's a whole lot of things that you can do with Raspberry Pi and I'd urge you to take a look at some of that. As always, if you're interested in learning about the latest and greatest around emerging tech, AI, IoT, Google Cloud Platform, go ahead and subscribe to this channel as I am releasing content around those topics on the regular. Anyways, thank you for listening.